Vipers are the epitome of evolutionary warfare. They have one of the most advanced venom injection systems in the world. Their bites are breathtakingly fast, and if you're bitten by one, you may only have hours to react. Hi, I'm Danielle Dufault, and you're watching Animal Logic. Vipers are a family of snakes found everywhere in the world except Oceania, Antarctica, and a few isolated islands. They're characterized by their triangular heads, giant fangs, deadly venom, healed scales, and elliptical pupils. First things first, their fangs. They have one of the most sophisticated venom injection systems in the snake world. Their fangs fold back into their mouths when not in use, sitting along the roof of their mouths, allowing them to grow much longer than if they were fixed in place. When they bite down, the muscles around their venom glands squeeze the venom out of their hollow fangs. Their fangs are not only hinged and can fold down, but can rotate independently of one another. When they bite, they can open their mouths 180 degrees, and the ability to rotate their fangs within that space is highly advantageous when striking prey of varying sizes. The Gaboon Viper has the longest measured fangs, coming in at 5 centimeters long. Viper venom glands are located behind their eyes, which is why they have such large, distinctive, triangular heads. Depending on the species, viper venom can be quite different from other snakes. Cobras and other elapids have venom that's full of neurotoxins that cause muscle contraction and paralysis. Their venom affects the diaphragm, which can cause the victim to asphyxiate. But many species of viper have venom that attacks the blood, causing the blood to lose the ability to clot, meaning wounds won't stop bleeding. Their venom will also cause pain, swelling, and in some cases, necrosis. The Russell's viper is particularly deadly. Its venom initially causes mass clotting, turning your blood into a jelly-like substance. This blocks up your kidneys, causing them to fail. Without your kidneys, your blood begins to build up in toxicity, eventually killing you. In a study of Russell's viper venom in Asia, 30% bitten had their kidneys fail, and in another group that received treatment, 14 of 45 patients still died. But it gets worse. Because your body has to release so many anti-clotting agents to counteract the increase of clotting agents caused by the venom, afterwards, your body can no longer clot, meaning that any further cut or bite will bleed continuously. This evolutionary arms race between vipers and their prey has taken millions of years to perfect leaving you only hours to seek treatment if you're bitten. Vipers also use their venom for digestion, breaking down proteins before the snake even swallows their prey. Vipers found in warmer climates are deadlier than those found in colder climates and have more potent venom. They don't always use their venom and will use a dry bite in self-defense, only using venom when they absolutely need to, as it takes a while to create. Vipers are great at gauging the size of their attackers to determine how much venom they'll need to take them out of commission. An adult male Gaboon Viper has enough venom to inject a lethal dose into 30 individual humans before running out. Since their venom takes longer to affect their prey than other snakes, they'll follow their prey while they die. This is called prey relocalization. They track their dying prey by following the scent of their venom though that scent will also attract competing vipers to the kill. Vipers are ambush hunters and spend most of their lives hiding in wait for prey. Many species of viper are arboreal and hide up in the trees. That's not frightening at all. Once a target is in range, they can strike in a quarter of a second. When hunting or defending, they're incredibly dangerous, but most of the time, Vipers are very chill. Vipers are very easy to tell apart from other snakes because of their scales. Most snakes are smooth, but vipers have keeled scales, meaning they overlap with a leading edge, giving them their distinct, bumpy appearance. Keeled scales are less reflective than flat scales and allow them to blend in better to their environments. But none are more amazing looking than the bush viper. Endemic to sub-Saharan Africa, Bush vipers have highly keeled scales, giving them that very sharp, beautiful, and artistic appearance. The species is chromosomally polymorphic, meaning they come in a lot of different colors, but green is the most common. 
Their amazingly beautiful coloration is used to warn potential predators of their deadly venom. All of the vipers found in the Americas are pit vipers, deriving their name from a heat sensing organ they have between their eyes, which sort of gives them night vision. It works like this. When infrared radiation enters the organ via small holes in their faces, the pit can detect the difference in temperature between moving prey and its surroundings. The sixth sense generates somewhat of a thermal image, which allows them to detect the warm bodies of prey at night and up to a meter away. Even when deprived of all of their other senses, pit vipers have been proven able to find prey that is just 0.2 degrees warmer than its surroundings. One of the coolest types of pit viper is the rattlesnake. If you ever come visit us up here in Georgian Bay, watch out, you're in rattlesnake territory. They get their name from a rattle at the base of their tail that they use to warn predators to back off or suffer the consequences. Their rattle is made of modified scales that have become hollow, interlocked segments. They will shake that rattle 50 times a second and can sustain shaking for up to three hours. When they're born, the babies can't rattle and it takes two sheds to develop the hardened tip required for rattling. Of the 10 most venomous snakes in North America, nine are vipers, and seven of which are rattlesnakes. The other two are the cottonmouth and the copperhead. Vipers get their name from the Latin vipera, which means live birth. This is because vipers give birth to live babies, not eggs, which is uncommon amongst other snakes. Interestingly enough, species that live in colder climates will brumate, the reptilian equivalent of hibernating. Often they will brumate in large groups of up to a thousand strong in what's called a viper den. Well, that is delightful. What animal should I check out next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every other week. Thanks for watching. What animal should I chalk about next? Chalk about. Yeah. Don't don't chalk about it.